We're live. Welcome to this special edition okay. of the Theater featuring New World Eternum. This is an action RPG experience for Because they didn't get their ass beat hard enough yesterday, they came back for round two. World. Dynamic real time action combat and the freedom. Can't wait for them to talk about the game. To forge their destiny. New Gotta World PR this game, guys. Let's go. Yesterday, so please welcome game director Scott Lane, senior producer Katie Kaczynski. And Rob Chesney, narrative director at Amazon Games, here to tell us more and break down everything we may have missed. I love they all have smartwatches, the smartest thing they have on them. Oh, thanks. thanks for thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us here at IGN Live. Now, before we jump into the trailer, I need to know, what are you guys most excited for players to experience in New World Eternum? I'm excited. I'm crazy excited to bring Eternum to console. We want to get all those players in on the console. Oh, I bet you do. I bet you do. The and then they leave once they hit level 65 because there's nothing to fucking do in this game. You know, I, I'm, I'm super excited that all these new players are going to get to see this world now fully realized. We talk about, you know, Eternum looks like a fantasy game in some ways, but we actually talk about it as a supernatural world, which means uh, everything that's going on in the island is tied into science or history somewhere. And of course, this is the island of mythology and legend. So we have this broad canvas to draw from for our story. And you have zero bit of it. Into. And they have and none. Players to get in and see that, I'm super excited. Plus, they don't have also, any of it. It means a lot to me as someone who tends to play solo. Uh, I bet you do. Totally soloable all the way from start to finish. You can play with your friends too, but... Yeah, and I am absolutely excited to play Eternum on my 4K TV on my I very bet. comfortable couch. I bet. Uh, with my friends who exclusively play on their console or who exclusively play on PC, we're all going to be joined in, in the same world, and I am super stoked for that. Let's go. Super. I love that. All right. So without further ado, we're so excited we fucked trailer. our player base. We have to watch the trailer again, guys. Oh, I'm so excited to watch this trailer again. They've come to these mythical shores. Wait, has this game is this game coming out in October for the first time? So stupid. They really just said, huh? What? What? New World came out in 2021? No, uh, we just released New World Eternum 2024. That game before doesn't matter. We actually made those idiots beta test us for three years so we could release this. And make the animation somehow look worse. It looks like ESO. It's like ESO with capes now. Ooh, the sandworm that gives you loot from two expansions ago. Gives you 625 gear, by the way. We're at 700. So your sandworm's useless. Except for the artifact. Corrupted portals. Nobody does them, by the way, new players. If you're watching this and you're new, nobody does corrupted portals. <laughs> oh, Isabella is like the big bad that's on the front cover. You kill her in a dungeon. Sorry to spoil it. This. I think at this point, the OG players just need to like show up in these fresh start servers and bully the fuck out of them. Let's go. People are so excited here. Are you guys excited to see it? That was so jam-packed with tons of details. Guys, help me break it down. Let's roll the first clip because here in this clip, let's bring it up. We get a look at the lost. So these Ooh, are the, the lost. Eternum, right? We have so three years of looking at the lost, by the way. Scheme with them. What can you tell us about the lost? Yeah, so uh, the lost are... They're treating it like it's a brand new game, by the way. Eternum. 
the really interesting like, thing about Eternum is the, the game's been out for three years. So as many times as you die, you don't really. And so the same thing happened to these poor, poor people who landed before you. Uh, and every time they were reborn, Eternum took a piece of them. They were lost to Eternum. So every time they come back till they look pretty mangled. And Eternum could do the same to you, but your soul is pretty strong. Oh, this soul is pretty strong. Ooh. Now, in this next section of the clip, <laughs> we get a look at this dryad deer, uh, which is part of the Angry Earth faction, right? Uh, what is the Angry Earth faction all about? So, so the Angry Earth is, we, th we talk about Eternum as <coughs> Paradise Lost, which is inspired by that very much. And it's the Garden of Eden where things have gone horribly wrong. And that's what the Angry Earth is. They are an expression of environmental vengeance, the world striking back against players, against the other forces that are contending for power on the island. Um, the Angry Earth, sometimes, I mean, they're natural, so sometimes they're a little more sympathetic. Sometimes they might even uh, help the players out a little bit against other enemies. But, uh, but cross them, and uh, you'll pay for it. Like, they're, they're, they could be really tough. So true. Yeah, you just get slashed in fire damage and they get die in one shot. They're actually right, the easiest so mobs to kill in the game. The older tech. Now, in this next clip, we actually see a little bit more modern tech by the musket. Uh, what can you tell us about how all these different eras collide? It was, it was one of the things that we found really interesting early in IP development because it's, it, there's this period in time, it's almost like the last gasp of people with shields and swords and breastplates, and then the very first breath of gunpowder and muskets and firearms. And when you throw some magic into that, it just creates cra chaotic, interesting gameplay, and we, we loved that. That was one of the key drivers in picking this era. Yeah, that is and awesome. you'll see in this clip, uh, one of our archetypes. So this is actually the musketeer archetype. Oh, and the archetype! Pair, at the beginning, we pair this with the rapier. So you have some really interesting abilities that you can do. Absolutely. Now, in this next clip, we get a look at a tree that's pretty impressive and it looks pretty significant. Absolutely useless, by the way. It's a side quest in, in Brightwood. Now. <laughs> so that's the Azoth tree, and Azoth is the lifeblood of Eternum. It is a, a soul substance. It's tied into the soul of the island, the soul of all the people here. You don't do anything um, here except kill the angry magic. earth. It's the reason why everyone lives forever. Um, so, and, and we talk about even like there are ley lines running underneath the ground throughout the island of, uh, channeling this stuff. Uh, players, of course, learn to harness it as they go uh, deeper into the game, and, uh, and it powers up a lot of their actions. And it, no, it uh, doesn't. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the tree itself is actually a manifestation of. Uh, you get an Azoth staff that's built for the corrupted portals that nobody that does. It's absolutely to, useless. Uh, empower the island, imbue the island with the blessings that the players enjoy, and all the people there. Amazing. <laughs> now. People are so excited, I love it. Now, in this next clip, we get a look at the different weapon types in combat. What can you share about what we're looking at right here? So we see a musketeer, we see some, some magic in the background, tell me more. Well, this kind of demonstrates the different, the, the combat of, of Eternum, right? We have physical-based dynamics. He almost said new what world. What I mean by that is your position in the world matters. You block, you dodge, you can duck underneath uh, weapons and uh, uh, arrows and projectiles. And so what you see there is uh, uh, the musket, which is part of our uh, musketeer archetype, and we have what, musketeer. six more archetypes that you can play. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Now, I am so excited to check out this next clip because we see this... Uh, this they look anxious. ...that is immediately attention-grabbing right here. What can you tell also me useless. the background for this location in particular? So this is a pretty iconic location in the game that you see in the first several hours. And we talk about the history of Eternum. It's, you know, it's, we don't talk about, it's not in centuries, it's in millennia. This is a world, an ancient world. We have ancient Sumerians, Babylonians, Chinese who came to this island. But even before them were, was this ancient civilization. And players see the ruins of it almost uh, as soon as they land. And there's kind of a mystery about who... Who were these ancients? What were they doing? Did, why did they summon humans to the island? And then what happened to them? And the Shattered Obelisk is, uh, it is part of that. It's one of the big clues in that mystery. Yeah, and you kind of, you hit on probably my favorite piece of journeying through Eternum, 
which is this is the level 30 quest that you're just constantly trying to unfold and the minute that you think you get it you realize that you don't so you don't oh. know if this like magical element is coming from a tournament itself they still don't know what the agents are by the way or is not of this world at all yeah. and one yeah and one interesting thing about this so in game development generally what happens is you have a narrative and then that drives the concept art how the art is created in this case, one of our artists took it on himself and they made this really cool thing. And we liked it so much that we had to write a narrative around this and get it into the game. Yeah, it was a little bit backwards. Awesome. This is true. <laughs> we love to hear that. That's awesome. Now, we talked about the mystery. We talked about the narrative. We talked about combat. But in this next clip, we actually get a look at this boss that looks absolutely crazy. What can you tell me about this monstrosity? This, this enemy is absolutely diabolical um, oh. i can't tell you too much because diabolical something's a surprise it's part of the raid i can tell you that that's one of the enemies in our 10 person raid oh 10 person raid all right yeah. uh-oh oh shit did we just f why are we effing now we were chatting a little bit we're back stage and this next clip shows me one thing that i think scott you're pretty excited about here is resource gathering uh. second. what can you tell me about the resource gathering in new world eternum yeah i think I'm, I'm so glad we stopped here because a lot of times when you get into games it's all combat energy action action and new world gives players an opportunity if you're not in the mood for that if you want some more chill gameplay hit rocks cut down trees it actually feels really good you can support your friends so if like you have if you socialize with people who like a different style of game they can go craft and make things that can make you better at the game and on top of that they can completely change Are we the good? you could get a group of three or four people and deforest the forest so when the, someone comes through there it looks totally different this time amazing no you can't now we've I've tried that before the trailer because there's so much to break down in this next clip we see a giant ice creature and i need to know more tell me about who this is how people can face them it's a yeah, random so boss in a dungeon another one of our bosses in a five person expedition so you're going to encounter them in the glacial tarn uh and the the very story behind this story one is that there are these giant machines deep in a tournament that somebody put there to try and gather all of the supernatural resources of the world and this ice giant is part of that and your job is to stop one of your enemies from taking over those machines and gathering that energy and power absolutely now in this next clip we see exactly what i would expect to take an ice giant down a fire staff this looks so cool yeah uh so in eternum different damage types will damage enemies differently so what is the natural predator of ice fire yeah it is huh? I think she left out an important piece though i mean what could be cooler than a 17th century flamethrower yeah i yeah. don't even know what else to say okay, a good mmo that you, that you don't rebrand three years now, later and forget about uh, your player base clip, we are in an entirely different biome uh tell me about this sort of more like sandy area so we're just going over the trailer is that what we're doing here all about right they saw their initial reaction to the stuff they announced and they're like yeah let's talk about the trailer tomorrow <laughs> there it is. yeah right here so we we get some different things in the foreground and the background. Talk to me about this location. So this is Brimstone Stands. It's one of the later uh, zones in the game. It's the biggest one. It's massive. I mean, a, a vast desert just packed with interesting stuff. Um, interesting. You know, what I love about it is this is, the, this is the place where the ancient Egyptians landed when they came to Eternum thousands of years ago. And the Romans came later. And there's kind of an interesting dynamic between them, the conflict between them. I'm going to refresh real quick. But we're not missing much in the image there the Ennead, which is a, a pyramid one of the ancient ruins where the ancients once channeled the power of the stars um but as players go around and, and visit the Ennead and these other ruins they're going to uh it, it really gives you that feeling of being a treasure hunter like indiana jones you know it's like that cool indiana thing. jones it's really fun it's a unique part of eternum i love it it sounds like it's yeah. shrouded in mystery now we're in the sand in the sandy area and up next in this clip we get to look at a pretty particular enemy type. What can you tell me about the giant sandworm that we see right here? Look at that beautiful face. 
Yeah, that's Shauna Shen. So Shauna Shen, you can actually see in the open world in Brimstone Sands. And you can join a 20-person elite trial, get some badass rewards, and take Shauna Shen. Badass rewards. Yourself. Badass rewards, guys. 625 gear. Now, up next, we see something that I'm pretty excited about. We get a look at the pre-order bonus mount, the Azoth Stalker. Uh, what can you tell me about the different mounts that are shown right here in the trailer? Yeah, so you can see a few of our different mount types here. My favorite is the dire wolf, and that is not the bear. You're trying to like, come on now. Uh, You're trying to like sell this product. Bonus. You're not excited about the bear mount. PC, you get a chance to grab that as well if you log into the game between June seventh and October fourteenth. So. Amazing. They look so cool. So if you're on, on PC at home, make sure to check that out. Now we are Yeah guys, go buy New World and then go buy the Rise of Angry Earth and spend ten dollars more than you would. Talk to me about what's going on and this more like mountainy location right here. We see this sort of gate and this like really impressive mountain behind. Yeah, so as you land on the beach, you start the game in this very tropical, beautiful area. And you quickly learn that the nemesis in chapter one is the Tempest, who you'll talk about here in a minute. This is, as you get further and further into the island, it gets harder and harsher and scarier. What you're seeing there is you're in Great Cleave and you're, you're about to enter Shattered Mountain, which is where the Tempest lives. This is where the game gets ultra scary, gets much harder and more difficult, and it kind of opens the door. And as soon as you get through the door, you'll see what you run into. Yeah, so you can definitely tell it's a lot more intimidating by those red tones. Um, in this next clip, we get a look at uh, this sort of, I'm, I'm assuming it's a, it's a boss. What can you tell me about this creature coming up right here? <laughs> we get the eyes sort of like teasing it. We get sort of walking towards this giant fire circle. And then we finally get the reveal right here. Talk, talk to me about the Tempest. So that's showing all the players getting up to this point, but that is the Tempest. She's the villain of the, uh, the first chapter of the story in New World Eternum. And uh, she is, what's, I mean, she has this really interesting backstory. She was once a human just like the players, but she embraced the power of corruption, which um, obviously comes at a cost, but uh, it also gives her great power. And she gets her hooks in the player at the very beginning of the game and uh, kind of gets in your head and she's taunting you and teasing you as you go through the island trying to make you corrupted. And uh, so that's one of the motivations for the player is, is to prevent her from turning them corrupted as well as to stop her from world domination, of course. Yeah, she definitely tries to get into your mind, that's for sure. And the Just cool like these devs are trying to sell their console game. We showed you the multiplayer, the five-person expedition. You can also take her on one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, yeah. Ooh, the solo trial that you can repeat me. The solo trial one-on-one. Now, in this next shot, we see a sweeping shot of the island. There is a lot to take in. We get, you know, a, a, a visual of the mountain here, the gate, the obelisk. Uh, what might people miss in this uh, sweeping shot of the island? Yeah, so uh, the Eden Grove, Brimstone. A lot of what we talk they kind of like skip over but Brightwood, but that's the okay. Upper right part of the shot there's an area of the map that we don't guide you to, and it's only up to the intrepid adventurers to go off on their own, off the beaten path. Are they talking about Morningdale? What areas are over there and what enemies lurk in those corners? And then on the other side, we have some of those ancient machines I talked about, which are up to, again, the journeyers to explore. The Love journeyers it. to explore. And then, of course... We got a lot of explorers in the audience. They are eating this up. I love it. Finally, we see the world seemingly... That's the most anyone's ever collection. clapped for them in two years. Right before we go to the key art game uh, end card, what is the meaning of this shot? Talk to me about They're it. eating so, this up because nobody's ever been this happy for them in like a hot minute. And it's like a child that's been abused emotionally for generations. And then somebody says like, good job. That's what they're doing right now. They're super excited. Corruption actually comes from somewhere else, and that's one of the mysteries of the game is where corruption comes from. But I definitely want to call out uh, this helmet here because it's one of the most iconic things in the game. It's associated with Captain Thorpe, the captain that uh, the players are on his ship when they shipwreck on the island at the very beginning. He's kind of a brutal dude. And, uh, he almost he said badass. Very quickly and becomes your first really big enemy. And if you look at his helmet there, you can see 
a lot of like little hints and uh, clues about the uh, the mysteries of Eternum kind of embedded there. All right, guys. So that is the end of the trailer. But before we wrap up, I need to ask you guys. You know, what can you tell us about how the experience has changed for players over the last three years from New World to New World Eternum? <laughs> Please. So uh, honestly, there's, it would be a lot easier to talk about what hasn't changed because <laughs> the list of what's changed is so big. I think for me, the biggest, the biggest change is the beginning of the game and the end of the game. The way we tell the story, the way we carry players through it, the, fa the part of the story. But then the end game has gotten so big and so rich. And there's no, it so, hasn't. And a lot of times when you play a, an RPG, when you get to the end of the you know, level, whatever, the cap level, you're I like how they keep calling it an RPG. That's just a portion. Like, that's when the game really starts. It opens up into this giant world. Yeah, and I will say, if you're somebody who started playing in 2021 and you stopped, you're going to come back to a completely different game. If you're somebody who Yeah, you really want those players back, huh? This is a continuation of that really fun journey that you're on. And if I bet it is. Player, this is... A turnum is the ultimate New World experience ultimate new world experience Scott, katie rob thank you so much for joining us here and helping us break down the trailer new world of Turnum is that is available it october 15th on playstation 5 xbox series x and pc i mean what did we what did we expect what did we what did we expect realistically uh you weren't expecting them to do anything here let's be honest this was a showcase to sell their product and that's fine that's business business as usual their fucking rhetoric over the past two days, though, of them being like, yeah, this is a completely new game, guys. Come in and play. Like, no, it's a solved game. It's a solved game. In fact, I think I know what people are going to be doing now because they're actually pissed off. When these console players get their own little servers, the uh, OG PC guys that, like, war and bully the fuck out of people, they're going to come on to your fresh start servers, give you a nice, fat, warm welcome because uh the dick slapping they've been receiving from the devs. They're going to take it out on you uh which would be funny and i hope they do do that actually that'd be great because what a way to rebel by ruining the new player's experience by coming into their servers and just destroying it you know like oh hey welcome to our game piss off <laughs> well, what are you gonna do what what's gonna happen because there's people out there that have eight to ten k hours of experience and we're gonna go against like fresh console players who just started and they're gonna like get in their little company they're gonna declare a war and then they're what they're gonna find out is that they declared war on like a dropouts alt company on the fresh start server purely made just to bully the fuck out of that server take over the entire thing kill the entire player base so you know hey maybe they maybe they'll like restrict it to like console only you know servers or something you know who knows uh but i i wasn't expecting much i just thought that, like hey you know you guys got your like dicks punched in yesterday and up until now and then now you're like i'm gonna add feel to the fire by talking about a trailer of our new game old game and uh yeah um out of touch i can't wait for them to like come out like i'm waiting i'm waiting for them to like address this shit which i know they're not going to but uh it, it'll be great i ah uh, ah uh, uh, i thought it would be better i thought it would be better get this cringe shit off my screen boy. <clears throat> all right well there's there's that uh i think we have a q a coming of uh soon probably in two weeks but maybe they'll like use their brain a little bit and make another video to address the things once they come back and like talk to the player base that they've had for the past three years and be like hey we haven't forgotten you guys but uh i doubt that's coming so all right well hey new world content 